Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remember how the January meltdown update left 64-bit versions of Windows more vulnerable than before the patch? The total meltdown vulnerability was caused by this patch and left Windows in a state that allowed any user to read and write any memory and that of course led to privilege escalation. Initially, it looked like that Microsoft fixed the problem in March Alf Frisk, who originally spotted the issue and wrote about it, stated that he was no longer able to exploit the bug after the March update was applied. But apparently that wasn't entirely correct. Last week, Microsoft released an emergency patch to fix just this problem. So if you see a security update pop up, this is exactly the reason why you may be getting this. And since this new problem is actually easier to exploit than the original meltdown vulnerability, I do highly recommend that you do apply this update. But then we have another bug that was believed to be fixed, which ended up not actually getting fixed all the way. About a week ago, Sarah Edwards wrote about a bug in early versions of macOS High Sierra, and I mentioned it back then, and also mentioned that current versions of macOS are not vulnerable. If you used this version of macOS to create an external encrypted APFS volume, that's the Apple file system, then the password used to encrypt the volume would be locked in clear text. While this issue appeared to be fixed in current versions of Mac OS, it turns out that a version of the issue still existed. If you create an unencrypted APFS volume first on an external device, like a USB drive, and then later decide to encrypt it, then the password is is still locked. And it's actually even a little bit worse than the original problem. The initial issue manifested itself in the macOS log archive, which is rotated every 30 days to make things worse. Worse, the new bug writes logs to var log install dot log, which is more persistent than this newer unified log. If you do have a Mac running macOS High Sierra, then it may be a Good quick check to crap for your password, but remember in this case, your password may be locked in your bash history. So maybe crap for a part of the password and make sure you clear out bash history after the fact. And well, uh, talking about credentials leaking applications built using the Django framework, apparently often leave the debug mode enabled on live applications. In Django with debug enabled, the server will expose configuration details like API keys, database connection details, and the like on port 80. 81. According to Fabio Castro, who tweeted about this issue, 28,165 servers are affected by this problem based on a Shodan query. So this is not really a vulnerability within Django. This is just a Django badly configured that exposes these credentials. And Cloudflare is announcing that they are entering the privacy and security enhanced free DNS server market. Remember, we already got Google's with 8888 and 8844. We got Quad9 recently sort of joining that with 9.9.9.9. .9 now, Cloudflare actually, they got 1.1.1.1 and a second one at 1.0.0.1. .0 .0 .1. Now, there are two ways how Cloudflare is attempting here to differentiate itself from its competitors. The first way is just by offering a faster service than its competitors. Right now, that appears to be true for the most part. Of course, that may depend on your geographic location. They also say that they went through some additional procedures and such to make sure that privacy of the service is maintained and they had actually Actually, their procedures audited by an auditing company in order to verify that what they're saying about privacy is true. 
Now, if you don't believe that uh, Cloudflare here is actually doing the right thing, then of course you may be tempted to just use multiple of these services. Actually, OpenDNS uh, probably should be put in this basket as well. Now, the problem of course here may be that instead of only giving each one of these services part of your browsing history, you may be giving almost all of your browsing history to all of these services and really sort of just increase your attack surface. That depends very much on how your name server, of course, will balance between these different services. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.